In this tutorial, we will acquire global data for GRASS-GIS. This tutorial is part of the course GIS for Designers. You can find a website for this course at baharman.github.io. Look under Courses, GIS for Designers, and you'll see a series of tutorials. This tutorial is the second in the series. There are videos on YouTube and Vimeo, and then a companion um, web tutorial. The tutorial online um, will have all the commands and uh, details about this and links. So to begin, um, I have a list of geospatial data sources. This includes global data sources um, such as Natural Earth, um, USGS Earth Explorer, and so on. Um, there's also lists by data type, including global to national level um, elevation data sets. Today we're going to look at the NASA DEM data set. This is a global digital elevation model um, at one arc second resolution, approximately 30 meter resolution. This data set covers almost all of the world except for some of the poles. Um, and it is based on the older shuttle radar topography mission. Um, this data set is an improvement on that, filling some voids and gaps with data from other missions like ASTER and the ALOS um, Global Digital Surface Model. It's improved processing for NASA DE. Um, to download this for GRASS-GIS, we can, of course, um, go to the NASA DM website and download tile by tile um, of the data. But there's a much easier way. There's an add-on for GRASS-GIS called r.n.nasadm. You can see the manual page here. And this will allow us to automatically download tiles of this global digital elevation model um, for a specific area of interest, um, making this a very easy process. To do this, you first need to register at NASA Earth Data, at their Earth Data portal, and you will need to uh, create an account and save your username and password. We'll need the username and password to download um, from their map server. So go to Earth Data and fill in a username and password to register. Um, to find an area of interest, um, we're going to use some reference data. So please download the Natural Earth data set for GRASS-GIS. This is um, a location in WGS84, the World Geodetic System of 1984. This is the same coordinate reference system that NASA DEM uses. So we'll be able to import NASA DEM straight into it. So please download the Natural Earth data set, extract it, unzip it, um, and move it um, to your GRASS database directory. This is simply a folder you choose on your computer. Um, by convention, we often name it GRASS data. I, for example, have a folder called GRASS data, and I store my GRASS data sets in here. I have the natural earth data set. Um, in GRASS terminology, each of these is a location, and it contains map sets. It always contains a permanent map set where your reference data is. Um, so let's go ahead and start GRASS now that you've downloaded the Natural Earth data set. 
When we start grass, the first thing we need to do is set the database directory. I'm going to browse and set it to grass data. Side of grass data, I have my locations. I'm going to find the natural earth data set, and you should have just a permanent map set. Since we're going to create new data, just as best practice, I advise you create a new map set, and you can call this tutorial. I'm going to use an existing map set I've made called demo. Hit start grass. And you'll have your layer manager on the left and map display on the right. We're going to start by adding a raster map. I'm going to right click. Uh, I'm going to, sorry, click on the um, add raster button here. And I'm going to add from the permanent map set the natural earth raster. I had a mask on that. So I've added the natural earth raster. Um, and I'm going to now add a vector map of countries as well. So go to the add vector map. And in the permanent map set, you'll see countries. These will show up as solid fills. I'm going to double click on countries, go to the third tab colors, and check transparent to make these just outlines. Hit apply to check. It looks a bit better. Hit OK. Now we will zoom in. You can use the zoom button here in the map display. I'm going to zoom into Switzerland for this example. We want to pick a fairly small country to download these, this big DM for. I'm going to pick, I'm going to zoom in here. Zoom into Switzerland. And now we want to select and extract um, a vector map for Switzerland from countries. There's two ways to do this. I can use the Select Vector Features button here in the map display, or I can use the command v.extract. So I'm going to use start by doing um, the Select Features tool. And I'll click on Switzerland. It'll be highlighted. And then in the dialog box here, I'm going to click Create a New Map to extract it. You'll see Country Selection show up here on my Layer Manager, and the Fill show up for the new map. So that's one way to create the map. I would probably want to rename this now with the command g.rename. But I am going to use another method to create this map. We can create this by extracting Switzerland from the attribute table. So if I right click on countries, show attribute table, I can see the tabular data associated with this vector map. If I look over here, there's a column called admin that has the names of countries. I'll use this to select the name Switzerland. I can use the command v.extract, or I can look here under Vector, Feature Selection, Select by Attribute, v.extract. Name of the input vector map will be Countries. Name of the output map will be Switzerland. I'm going to go to the second tab, Selection, and in the 
the where ops. I'm going to type an SQL query. This is going to be admin equals and then single quote Switzerland and because I've already done this I'm going to make sure I hit allow overwrite and then I run the command so now I have a nice map of Switzerland a nice vector can hide the fill um, and optionally increase the line weight as well. Now, before we import the NASA DM, we need to um, set a computational region to Switzerland to limit the raster operations to this area. Otherwise, we'll be downloading map tiles for the entire world. So to limit the operation just to Switzerland, we're going to set the computational region here. There's several ways to do this. One is simply to right click on the Switzerland map layer and go set computational region from selected map. You see this red box appears around it now. This is this box represents my the extent of my region. My region has other settings, such as resolution, which I also need to set. We know that NASA DM is at one arc second resolution. So I'm going to set that um, with G dot region. There's two ways I can get to this. I can go to settings, computational region, set region, or I can simply type the command g.region in the map console. Now, this pulls up the command g.region module. Um, I can set it to a vector map. This is what I've already done, actually, um, by right-clicking and going set computational region to map. I set the region to match the vector map Switzerland. Now I also need to set the resolution. I'm going to go to the third tab resolution and set the resolution here to um, one arc second, which is approximately 30 meters. We're in a geographic coordinate system, WGS84, and it's in degrees, minutes, seconds. Um, angular units. So I'm going to set it to 0 degrees, 0 minutes, and 01 seconds, and run. Now I'm ready to run the, um, ready to install the add-on um, r.n.nasadm. This is an extra module, so we need to install it. We can do this with the command g dot extension, extension equals r dot n dot nasa dem, or we can go here to settings, um, add on extensions, install extension from add ons. This will be under raster. The nice thing about this dialog is I have a list of all of the extensions available. Um, but it may be slower to browse through this if you already know which extension you're after. Then pick your extension r.n.nasadm and hit install. Once it's installed, you can run the command r.n.nasadm. If you have a problem um, pulling up the command the first time you run it, you may need to um, append the flag dash dash UI for user interface to force the user interface to start for an add-on. 
So we have the um, r.in.nasadm interface here. For the um, name for the output map, I'm going to call this Swiss Elevation. Um, you could also just call it NASADM, for example. Um, we need to go to the Optional tab, and the mandatory thing here to do is to set your username, whatever you saved on NASA Earth Data, and your password. So set these in the Optional tab. I've already run this command, so if I was to run it again, I would need to allow overwrite. Um, every time you run a command, it's creating data, and that data is going to be protected. So if you need want to replace it, you have to set overwrite in a command that's going to replace it. This is to prevent mistakes. So run this command, and it will take a while. It's going to download at least eight tiles to cover all of Switzerland. Um, so depending on your download speed, that may take um, maybe 10 minutes. Once it's finished, um, you should add your new um, raster map, in this case Swiss Elevation, to the map display. So there we see it. I can right click to zoom to it. And um, the first of all, let's compare it with the natural earth map behind it. If I want to see the resolution of the map uh, from NASA DM, I can right click here and go to metadata. You can also use the command r.info. Um, the metadata shows me that my resolution is about one arc second. If I look at Switzerland, uh, sorry, if I look at natural earth, and I go right click and go to metadata, I'll see that the resolution is um, one minute and 12 seconds, so much lower. And I can also see that quite easily visually here. Um, if we want to now apply a raster mask to limit um, display in all operations to the shape of the vector map of Switzerland, we can do that with a command r.mask. That lives here under raster mask. The name of the map to use as a mask, we'll use a vector map in the second tab. And I'm going to use Switzerland. Now you'll see everything appears to be masked to the border of Switzerland. This means all future raster operations, until I remove the mask, will be inside of the border here. Let's um, change the color table um, from, this is the default color table for grass. It's called Viridis. It's a perceptually uniform color table. It's good for uh, people with um, color blindness, for example. We're going to change it to the elevation color table for practice. Right click on Swiss elevation and select set color table. I'm going to go to the second tab to find, and I'm going to pick a name of a color table. You can either just type in elevation, or I can select it from the drop-down list here. I'm going to go ahead and run this, and I can see my elevation map now, where teal is low, going up to uh, brown as high values. Back in the define tab, I may want to get a better stretch, so I'm going to set histogram equalization to try to get a more balanced spread of values. So check histogram equalization and run the command again. For the command that adds a flag E, you can see I have um, a stretch that shows me more gradation of color. This is simply a representation of the data in the raster. Now, 
To better visualize the terrain, we're going to compute a new map, shaded relief, and then we're going to um, overlay this with the um, raster elevation map. So I'm going to use a command r.relief. I could type it in the command console, like so. Or I can go here to raster, terrain analysis, compute shaded relief, r.relief. The input map is going to be our Swiss elevation map. And our output, I will call this Swiss relief. That's all I really need to do. I'll go ahead and run it to begin with. I've already made it, so I need to go to the Optional tab and check Overwrite. Is, um, the module will automatically go to the command output and show you the progress. When this finishes, we can try to um, either adjust the azimuth um, or the vertical exaggeration. So here I can see my shaded relief. I have a new um, raster map layer in the layer manager for Swiss relief. I can rerun this module. Make sure you have allow overwrite checked. And I could either change the azimuth of the sun, change the hill shading direction, or I could increase a scale factor for relief, the Z scale parameter right here. I could change it double or triple, and that's going to give me more exaggerated relief. One way we can visualize shaded relief and elevation is simply to change the opacity of the relief map, but there's a better way to do this in graphs with the command r.shade. So the simple way is just to right click on Swiss relief here and change the opacity. Um, or I could also move Swiss elevation on top and change the opacity a bit. Either way, so we change opacity level, right click, change opacity, and maybe make this something like 50%. However, this doesn't look great because it's a little washed out. So I'm going to change my opacity back to 100%, and I'm going to use a different method to do this. I'm going to use the command r.shade. That's also under raster, terrain analysis, apply shade to raster, r.shade. So the first input is going to be my map Swiss relief. And my second map um, is going to be my Swiss elevation map. And my output, I'll call this Swiss Shaded uh, Relief. In the um, optional tab, I've already made this, so I'm going to check overwrite, and we'll run that. What you need to do with this command is run it several times and set a percentage to brighten. The first time you run it, will probably be too dark. So I'm going to run it once, see what the result looks like, and um, run it again with a brightness. What? There we can see it looks much better, but it's too dark. So I'm going to make the brightness factor somewhere probably 30 to 36. Uh, check overwrite and run this again. Our 
our final step will be to um, add um, a raster legend showing the values for the elevation map. When we do add the legend, um, make sure you're adding it for the elevation map, not the shaded relief map. So our shaded relief looks great. Now it's time to add a legend. So to add a legend, make sure you select this map Swiss elevation. And on the map display, you can go here to add map elements and you'll see legends, scale bar, north arrow. We're going to start with just a legend today. Add raster legend, Swiss elevation. Make sure you have Swiss elevation, not the shaded relief. That's all we need. Um, I'm going to do an optional addition and add a font here. I'm using um, the free open source font Leto. Um, you would have to install it on your system. I'm going to set the font size here. You can select any font installed on your system right here. Hit apply and OK. Now, if the legend's too big, we can control that in that dialog. But an easier way to start with is just to right click on your legend, go resize, and draw the size you want, like so. And this is showing um, the elevation values. Okay, and that completes the tutorial for today. Thank you.